Today in the news, colors make us vulnerable, we got some AMD stuff, and xCloud is coming. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with some RGB. It's a weird thing to say. All right, so RGB is nice. It makes your builds look beautiful. It can literally be applied to any part of your system, from motherboards, GPUs, to your RAM, even your SSDs. But one thing that's always been a bit annoying to deal with is RGB software. If you have a mismatch of different parts, you might have to download different softwares. And if you want to turn it off, it also requires you to download an app. Well, you might as well leave them in their default state doing whatever RGB pattern it does on first boot, rather than install any RGB apps. Graham Sutherland on Twitter made quite the commotion about RGB Fusion, a gigabyte utility for RGB lighting. According to his reverse engineering of the software, it's just not very secure. In a nutshell, what he found is that the hardware that controls your RGB on your gigabyte, let's say, GPU, is shared with parts of the hardware that control your actual GPU. So essentially, someone with the skills could either brick your hardware, or your GPU in this case, or could even use the drivers to talk to the network without the OS seeing any packets, all without admin access to the machine. Other users also experienced some weird issues, like this guy with RGB Fusion install, which kept wiping his CMOS after each boot. The issue also doesn't seem to be gigabyte specific. In fact, people have been finding vulnerabilities on RGB lighting software since late last year. Secure Auth, a security firm that specializes in finding vulnerabilities, had alerted both Gigabyte and ASUS of their problems in April, but most of them still persist. That's April of last year. ASRock seems to be one of the good ones fixing their problems as soon as they were discovered. Moving on to some AMD news, we have some info as to why the Ryzen 9 3950X was delayed. According to Digitimes, the 3950X is being delayed because of unsatisfactory clock speeds. As we already know, the 16-core monster of a chip is supposed to reach the highest clock speeds of all Ryzen CPUs to date, 4.7 GHz. And with all the Ryzen boost issues surrounding the product over the last few months, this isn't really surprising. Now you might say, but AMD fixed all of the problems with it. Well, if this report is correct, then those issues might have been a little more silicon based than we thought. In any case, AMD did delay the product, which means a fix must be on the way. I understand that delays aren't great for the company's image, especially if you were looking forward to buying one of them, but at least it means the product might come with more of a polished feel rather than a beta testing one. Also with AMD, we have more reports of SMT4 for Zen 3. In case you didn't know, SMT4 is basically hyper-threading on steroids. It allows for a processor with one core to have four different threads. This isn't actually new. IBM's Power 8 CPUs can actually scale its workload on up to eight different threads for a single core, but this would be the first time that we see it with AMD. Now, could we see it in Zen 3? Sure, would it make sense in consumer hardware? Not really. But the server market is where it would be useful, and if AMD implements it in a similar way IBM did, the new architecture could toggle between various levels of SMT. So why would AMD wait until Zen 3? Well, to implement SMT properly in a form factor that makes sense, the processor needs to be dense. And with the advances in the 7 nanometer plus process from TSMC, this could be feasible. If you want a deeper look on the subject, check out the article detailing the Power 8 IBM CPU in the description down below. It's actually super interesting, and it's interesting to see how it scales the more threads you have. In Microsoft news, we've been waiting for some new information on their upcoming streaming platform, xCloud. While streaming service seems easy enough to understand, we don't actually know what Microsoft's business model will be for the platform. Will the service have a dedicated library of free games you can play from from any device, like with GeForce Now if you own a Shield, or will it be more like Stadia, where you pay a monthly fee strictly for the benefit of renting an Xbox in the cloud? Or maybe it'll be a tiered system with different levels. On level 1, you can rent an Xbox in the cloud and play your own games. On a level 2, well, you have the Xbox on the cloud plus a library of free games. And level 3, you would have both plus Xbox Live. In any case, we've been teased for a long time about the service, and it will finally enter beta next month. You can actually already sign up for it if you live in the US, UK, or in Korea. The beta will launch with access to five different games, Halo 5, Gears 5, Killer Instinct, and 
Dependency of Thieves. Oddly enough, the beta will only be accessible on Android devices running version 6.0 or later. What do you guys think Microsoft will do with the service? Let me know down below. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for the news today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you got any questions or comments, you can drop them down below. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Or I'll see you on The Good Place. Every Sunday at 9 o'clock on NBC. If you noticed there was a difference in lighting, it's because one of my lights gave up, like right in the middle of filming. So I'm sorry about that.